and welcome back to another episode of Like Minded with your host Recapilly and the person who is much better, CD After Man. What? 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 Hey. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Like Minded. It has been a long time, CDF. So long that our sign. That got started. Yes. Oh, jeez. I think we're gonna need a new set soon. <laughs> well, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Um. All right. But this is the show where we talk to like-minded people in the gaming community. Today, we have a very special guest, one of our good friends, Nate T. Bird. Come on out, man. Hey. Hey there, buddy. How's, How's it, it going? going? Oh, you stole my words. <laughs> ah, I'm, re I'm, I'm really good at that. <laughs> Dude, we are so excited to have you on, man. It has been a long time since we've talked. Yeah, it has. I like your skin, by the way. That's... Is it all redstone and then question mark? What's up with the question mark? Um, so when I first started Minecraft, I had no idea what skin to do. Like I had, I had no idea. So I just created this pure gray skin and put a question mark on it as a placeholder skin. So that's where the question mark comes from because once I decided, hey, I'm gonna, I wanna make a skin that kind of like has redstone, stone, and and a command block on it, but I. I really, I really liked the question mark, so I kept it. There's a certain air of mystery, and and I like that part too. It's, I'm always mysterious. Nice. So it's definitely got <laughs> history for you. Um, yep. For those who do don't know who you are, Nate, why don't you go in and tell them who you are to the community? So I am a Minecraft map maker. I make mostly like arena maps, but I also make a few other maps. Currently, I'm making a parkour map. So. You Ooh. probably would know me by my map Dungeon Arena or recently Crypt Crawler. That's uh, rising in popularity right now. So mm -hmm. very happy about that. Yeah, you got some pretty big YouTubers playing it. Yep, Etho, Zuma Void, False Symmetry, a lot of other like foreign country YouTubers. Oh, nice. Don't, Those don't are the best. Them, but <laughs> but they're, they're still pretty cool. So, yep. Nice. Oh, dude. So how long have you been doing uh, doing maps? Because... I've looked at your stuff, and you you definitely have some talent. If you guys do not play any of his maps, you need to go back, play all of his maps, no matter what version Minecraft it is, because they are awesome. Except except for one. There's one that you should not play, but we'll, <laughs> just, we'll not mention that we'll one. We'll not mention that one. So how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it for a few years. I It all started when I was like in high school, I believe, like my second second year in high school. I just wanted to make something something fun, something cool. And I saw Minecraft and I was like, well, that's super cool. And so I decided I would try to make a map and I, I played a map that I really liked. So I tried to recreate it, but I, I made it better. And so that's where Dungeon Arena 1 came from. That's where I did that. So been a couple of years, a lot of, a lot of maps, a lot of learning. Now, because you do mostly um, PVP or PVE maps, um, how do you keep them interesting and challenging when at the end of the day you're hacking at enemies? That is a very good question. I, I like to add variety. So you're going to have a sword, but what if I have a sword that has knockback on it or sharpness on it and I name it something very interesting, then like it's, it's all just an illusion, really. It, it's not actually a, a better sword or a cooler sword or anything different than just hacking away. It just makes it feel like it's different. I feel like you did a really good job with that in Crypt, Craw Crypt Crawler. I mean, there is a wide a range of weapons, of enemies, at least to a basic player who doesn't understand what's going on. Yeah, and with that, I also added attributes. So that's something that's newer to Minecraft, um, which which helped me to make the the weapons and armor very unique and various. Now, are you excited about the ar the uh, action update or the combat update coming in one point nine? I am super excited. I can't wait to see what they add because I am very combat oriented. I I really I really look forward to what they add and to to making some new maps with that. So you can actually look forward to that. I, I plan on making some really epic 1.9 maps. Now, what do you what would you want in a 1.9 combat update? Uh, more attributes. So just more things for me to customize so that I can create more customized weapons. 
shields. Shields are great. And really just something that it, that's not just point and click. Right. I think we are getting just, shields, actually. Yeah. So that's going to be exciting to see how they implement. Yeah. Unless it's not a shield slot, unless it's like a chest slot or something like a backpack. There's been a lot of speculation for that, but I, mm. I do think that shields um, should be added and that they could very easily be added. Yeah, and I, I particularly like with your maps, uh, you always have a store that you can go in and get your upgrade <laughs> yep. your weapons and everything like that. It definitely adds that extra bit of like economy when you're playing. Yeah, I, I really love... Uh, upgrading and just becoming stronger in in games and so that's why I try to have most of my games have some sort of an upgrade or uh, purchasable system some sort of an economy with the map just just because I like it so much and so it it's really fun for me to put it into the map right everyone wants to go super saiyan every once in a while <laughs> yep <laughs> like the uh, slap fish that you got in there I like that <laughs> yeah that's awesome so Here's a question for you, Nate. Have you ever considered a story perspective in your maps? So, like, obviously you can do a whole dungeon crawler, uh -huh. but placing that in a environment that's, like, giving purpose behind your action. <laughs> Freaking CBS. Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. I, I know you always bring up story in, in your in, uh, in like-minded because that's what you do. You do a lot of story-based <laughs> things. And I... I haven't really done it yet, but Crypt Crawler, the very end, spoiler alert, there is a boss battle that I scripted, so he actually speaks to you. And that was sort of like my first step into, mm -hmm. you know, learning how to do story a little bit better. Um, I do plan on making an adventure map sometime soon, and, and soon for me could be six months or a year. <laughs> So, Ooh, nice. could could be a long time, but I do I do want to do story story based stuff, and I, that's that's part of the coolest part is is being able to explore and to have an adventure basically. Now you build this all yourself, right? The building, the redstone, everything on your own. You don't have a team, do you? Yep, I do it all by myself. I do have one friend in real life. He hasn't really helped me build any of the maps, but he did the voice acting for the last map, and he helps me test all the building is done by me but um all the testing and stuff is done by me but also by other people so it takes a long time but i i feel like i can do a better job when i do it myself basically because i know what i want mm -hmm. and that's definitely like i feel like making a whole map by yourself um and then have it come out well like that's like oh i did that versus like having a large team um type thing so, have you ever had a project in which you didn't complete, or you tried taking on too much that you than you could handle at one point? And if you have, or if you have the ability to finish stuff, what are some ways that you ensure you complete the whole thing? Um, I know a lot of people, uh, when they go to make maps, they try to do too much, or they just drop the project. What are some ways that, um, like, you do to keep going um so yes i have had plenty of projects that i have not completed either they're just not interesting enough for me to continue working on them or they're too big and so i just i get overwhelmed and i can't finish working on them but i don't know i i just you got to keep working at it you got to keep trying even even small steps every day to to make the map uh, really helps a lot with Crypt Crawler, actually, there was a time where I wasn't working on it because I just I just didn't feel like it was going to be good enough. I just wasn't feeling motivated to work on it, so mm -hmm. I didn't, and I played Terraria instead. But that's, that's <laughs> irrelevant. I I was just wasting my time. But then uh, eventually, I just decided, you know, I've already put in this much work into the map. I feel like it's going to be cool. There is a lot of work ahead of me, but I need to finish it, or else. You know what? What is it going to say about me finishing future projects? I need to need to show myself that I can do this. It's going to make you look like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. So, what would you say to any aspiring map makers out there who might want to get into into something like what you do? I would say keep trying. 
there are a lot of map makers out there who have really great ideas and and they come to me and they're like, hey, can you help me with this? And I'm like, no, I'm busy on my own ideas. But and then it, it like kind of d- discourages them. But really just try to do it. And if you fail, then that is a success because you learn something from that. So keep trying and test. Test your maps a lot. <laughs> Always test the maps. Yeah, that's um, yes. good advice. We learned that from 60-minute maps. <laughs> oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> Definitely. Um, particularly with my epic fails that I've had every single time. Um, <laughs> uh, so, that's fun, though. It's always fun. Uh, <laughs> but, man, trying to make a map in 60 minutes. Now, that <laughs> that's pretty crazy. Yeah, um, Nate, have you tried it out yet? I have not. I, I've i tried, like, I've thought about limiting myself to a certain time limit, but it just hasn't felt right for me yet. But I, I might do that in the near future. Yeah, yeah maybe, that, maybe we'll all get together and do a 60-minute maps. That'll be fun. So, Nate, in your um, Encrypt Crawler, you used a custom resource pack with yes. custom textures, custom voice acting, and custom modeling. You know who wouldn't like, like that? <laughs> yep 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 do you want a cue or <laughs> anyway um did you make all that stuff yourself and what was that like and for people who haven't really delved into the custom models and stuff like that what is some ways for them to you know learn that i did i did all of that myself uh, a lot of that was uh, what took me so long because i was making all the textures um, the reason for it is because I wanted to create an experience that had never been seen in Minecraft before. So I was trying to make every texture that you would see in the map something different, ex- except for the mobs. And and then what was the rest of your question? You asked a lot. Um, the custom models and how you got into making them. All right. So I really like custom models. I saw some custom models and I was like, well, that's really cool. I want to try doing that. So for me, I learn through almost like deconstructing what other people have done. So I downloaded a couple of 3D resource packs. I looked at it. I used the wiki or the Gamepedia to to understand the, the format a little bit better. And then I tried making something. And it, I had a lot of mistakes. I had a lot of mess ups. But eventually, I did figure it out enough to make the, the, the models for Crypt Crawler. Ah, very nice. And did you use a um, 3D program to help you do that? Actually, no. I did it all by hand in Notepad++. I don't recommend what? it. It took me a very long time. Wait, what? <laughs> what? What? Hold hold on. What? That is sorry. actually really shocking. Like, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't use Cubix or whatever? No, I didn't. Uh... I... I've always had a very good recognition of like 3D space. I did drafting for a little bit when I was in high school and and I guess I can just visualize things a little bit easier than most people uh, in 3D space without actually seeing the 3D space. You amaze me, sir. <laughs> like that is well, truly impressive. Yeah. I I only did a few models like the torches and the armor, and I think that's it. But, yeah, it, it's still, it just took a little bit of trial and error, and then once I figured out how to do it, then I just, you know, did it. For people out there who want to get into the map-making space or wanting to learn how to, like, do these commands, what advice do you have for them? Uh, go to the game page, or the Gamepedia page, about commands and just read it like read it every day all day just just become uh, very familiar with the different commands that you can use and you know try try them out try things out experiment a lot of the times I look at other people's maps to see how they did certain mechanics and then I try to recreate it or deconstruct it and actually on crypt crawler if you want to learn how anything is done I labeled pretty much every command block in the game, well, 
most of them anyways. So you can actually go through and, and try to understand and deconstruct what the command blocks are actually doing. That's really nice. All right, so why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about your new parkour map that you were talking to us about. Okay, so with every map, I try to have some sort of a goal in mind, like some idea that I want to explore or something that I want to do. And with, with parkour, I really hate parkour. Like, mm -hmm. I really hate it. I do not like mm -hmm. parkour maps at all. And CDF, you can probably agree with me. I love parkour. <laughs> Rick Billy, you love parkour. So my goal with this map is to make a parkour map that everybody will like, including you, CDF. <gasps> wow, how do you plan on doing that? Yeah. <laughs> so so to do that, I'm going to I'm going to take what I don't like about parkour maps and I'm going to try to change them or to fix them. Uh, one thing that I don't like that a lot of people probably actually do like is the fact that there's no checkpoints. Like you make a jump and then you have like 12 more hard jumps before you get to anywhere. And if you fall on the 12th jump, you have to restart. If you fall on the first jump, you have to restart. And it's just very annoying. So in my map, I'm going to have frequent checkpoints. Mm. I'd like that. Yeah, I, I know. I know you would. And I like it too. They're not, they're not every jump, but they are like every few jumps. Right. Oh, yeah. That's definitely um, nice. I remember playing... Uh, Diversity 2, oh god. Oh gosh. <laughs> I got so yeah. mad at the freaking parkour. But yeah, I loved it. Still love parkour. Yep. Uh, another thing, like what you were saying at the very beginning, is I like to do economy in my maps. And so for this one, I'm going to reward the player for missing a jump. If they fail, they get a point that they, that they can use to to buy upgrades and uh, little perks and cosmetics just to make the experience a little bit more fun. And the things that they're uh, going to be upgrading are the blocks. So different blocks will give you different effects. So some blocks give you speed boost, jump boost. Some blocks allow you to multi-jump. And you can upgrade the power of those so that you can multi-jump three times or four times rather than just twice. And, and once you do upgrade, then you can reach more secrets, you can reach perks, you can, you can just do more with, with, with the upgrades. Now, do you feel like in, say, this parkour map or uh, a crawling map or that type of thing, what level of randomization have you ever pursued? And do you feel like that is a better way of like designing these maps rather than like the solid experiences that are the same every time? Um, I try a little bit of both. I feel like if you have a random experience, it makes it more uh, replayable. So you can play the map multiple times. And also if your favorite YouTuber is playing the map and you watch it, then maybe you're like, oh, I've already seen how this map pans out. So maybe I don't play it myself. Um, with randomization, if the experience is different every time, then players can play it again and again. And if they see their YouTuber play it, then they can play it as well. And it'll be a different experience. I have a question on your parkour map. Um, do you plan on doing the amount of texture and modeling that you did in previous maps? Uh, no, I do not. It's going to be vanilla am, based? I'm only going to change the textures of the blocks that you're jumping on. and. Also, some of the GUI. Um, but for the most part, I'm not going to change every texture like I did in Crypt Crawler. All right. I'm really interested to see how you do it. I like parkour maps. <laughs> All right. I, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope I hope it's playable for you. How far along are you? Um, are you already working on the map itself or working on the mechanics? What are you doing right now? So most of the core mechanics are done. Uh, this includes the upgrading, all of the block effects, and and everything like that. Um, but the level design is what I'm having the most trouble with, because I need to design each parkour level to to make it interesting, uh, somewhat challenging, but not rage inducing. Mm. So I have three of three of the levels done, uh, one more to do, and then a few bonus levels as well. Very nice. All right, so really quick before we finish off the show, uh, I do want to tell you all that you should definitely check out this guy's mm -hmm. 
channel. He doesn't. When was the last time he posted a video? I haven't seen too much, honestly. It was uh, last week, actually. Last week. I'm doing the behind the scenes for Crypt Crawler. Oh, so that's right. Yeah, you want to yeah, know yeah, how it works? Check it out. Yes, he is oh, doing yes. that. So definitely check it out. Check out his maps. This guy is is awesome. Very impressive. <laughs> Things that I did not know about him, I've learned today. Very cool. Um, so we'll definitely have your links and everything inside the description. Is there anything else you want to tell the people that that, are, that might be watching? Um, no, just just keep having fun, guys. If if you stop having fun, then I'm out of a job. So so have fun. You don't want so, Nate to be out of the job. Yeah, don't do that. Nate, as you know, everyone who comes on the show gets payment. And as I saw on your back, you've got a nice redstone torch. Uh, yeah, flaunt that. Uh, so here you go, buddy. Don't blow up anything. <laughs> um, yes, wait, please. Wh why? Why? I want to. Well, I guess we do need a new set. Hmm. Uh. Hmm. This is going I'll, I, to I very dangerous places. <laughs> I'll, I'll take care of that. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Be sure to follow us on Twitter for more updates on the show. And uh, let us know who you want to see next on the show. Thank you, Nate, for joining us, and we will see you all in the next one. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching, and until next time, we are out. Bye. Peace. Bye.